So market size doesn't need to be a four-page business school analysis, though if you've went to business school, feel free to do the analysis. But it really is at first a back-of-the-envelope calculation. Is this business worth doing? So we just kind of have you constantly checking about three things. And let's take a look at the Jersey Square team and, and think about how they approached this. If you remember, we asked you to talk about the total available market or total addressable market, which really is a fancy word to say is how big is the universe of everybody potentially who could use the product. And in this case, they said, well, even in the United States, there are 150 Americans who watch the five major team sports in some capacity. Okay, well, can we sell to 150 million people? Not really, because the next thing we want to look at is what we call the served available market. How many can I reach with my sales channel? So let's see how the Jersey Square team looked at the served available market. They said in the New York metro area, there were 11 million people who watched the five major sports teams in some capacity. What they really should have done is said that, but then said, how many of them have a web browser? And how many of them will we actually be able to reach uh, within some period of time and with some semblance of cash? And the next thing they were looking at was their target market. Who will be their most likely buyers? And they did some research at Yankee Stadium and said 11 or 12 percent of the served available market showed strong interest. And they said, well, that means just in the New York area, 1.3 million people should be interested in a subscription or rental. Really, again, if they were doing analysis for real, they should have said, but how many of them can we reach with a web browser? And then how many of them can we actually get with our acquisition and activation campaign? And what falls out of this, if you actually take it to the next level, is what's a reasonable assumption of year one, two, and three revenue? Just back of the envelope. Okay, so these are the people. Gee, subscription and half pay rental. Let's do some math. Oh, my first year's revenue should be $300 million. Nope, I think I'm being a little too optimistic. At least you'll start with a series of calculations that you could bounce off advisors and friends and uh, co-founders and say, you know, are we even in the ballpark of making an interesting business? One of the things to keep in mind is that no startup has ever exceeded their optimistic estimates of market size. So if your numbers are coming in too low of potential customers, I wouldn't give up. I would just be going back and looking at the customer segments you're targeting and understand whether you want to build a business or have a hobby.